Hey guys, this is the M&M. And the reason why I call it the M&M or the micro minnow is because everybody loves M&Ms, including me and including the fish. And as you can see from the video, this fly just moves like crazy. All the micro articulations and shanks that are in here just come alive in the water and make it move and look like a minnow. And the materials that I put together here give it a translucency and I think most importantly gives it a really strong lateral line throughout the entire side of the body. And I believe between translucency and that flashy lateral line, it really sells this to the fish. So let's take a look at the materials. I've got five micro shanks in it, three that are six millimeter in the back, two that are eight, and then for the lateral line itself, both in the tail and in the front, is a flashaboo mirage in opal. As far as the body materials, very simple. I have an ice dub in UV tan across the back. And on the head or the front hook, basically it's a laser dub in two different colors, tan across the top, and white across the belly. You'll also notice inside I've got a nickel tungsten bead, which is really nice. That's what helps to give it that motion in the water. You'll also notice that it's set back a little bit so that the dip and the drop isn't as quick as it could be if it was right at the head. And everything on the front is put together on a Gamagatsu B10S size number 10. So without further ado, let's get tying. All right, so let's get time. We're gonna start with a fish skull micro spine, six millimeter. And for thread, I'm using nano silk, which is a GSP. And I'm basically bringing my thread all the way down to the bottom of the shank. And as far as material, what we're going to build this fly on is ice dub. This is ice dub in UV tan. And I'm going to break out three separate amounts because we're going to use three six millimeter shanks. So I'm going to use it sparingly. And my goal here is to start with three similar light amounts. So again, you can see it's very, um, very thin. And the idea here is to be transparent. So all I'm going to do is align the tips, as you can see now. And just going to put 50% out front and 50% out the back. And I'm just pulling everything down because what I'm going to do is in order to make sure that I have a nice front and bottom or top and bottom is that I'm going to put the first section on the bottom and the second I'm going to fold over and I'm going to bring it to the top. So I'm just going to double check, do a quick sanity check to see if I've got it in position and it looks good. Next, this is Mirage. It's a Flashaboo product called uh, Mirage. It ha happens to be opal. And what I've done is I've cut off about, I think it's three different pieces of it. And this is going to become the lateral line. So I'm just going to tie it in nice and loose and then tighten it down. And I'm going to go all the way back on the shank and then come all the way forward. And now I'm going to wrap the Flash and Boom Mirage right up the shank. Once I get up to the front, I'm just going to come over it, do two wraps behind and then two wraps in front, which will secure it into position and I'm going to clip it. And in order to keep the Flash and Boom together, 
just gonna real quick run it through my mouth just to keep it together. Now, as far as a length, I wanna do a quick measurement of the actual length of the shank, go up, and what I wanna do is about a length and a half of that. So right about to here, that would be double. I'm just gonna go in between and do a quick clip just like that. And I'm going to fold it over and now come in front and just do one loose wrap and then a second loose wrap. And what I'm gonna do is now use my rotary vise and if you don't have one, just look from the top to the bottom and make sure that the materials are spread out evenly across the shank itself. So again, we've got it on top and bottom. It looks like there was more on top than on the bottom, so I'm just gonna pull everything forward again, go through and get it evenly distributed. So this is really the only time that you're gonna be able to make sure that that distribution is the way that you like it. So take your time while everything's loose to get it right. So just come over with a couple tighter wraps. That's a total of four. And now what I've done is I've grabbed my zap a gap in medium and I'm gonna coat about a quarter inch of that nano silk, and then I'm going to wrap it right back onto itself. All right, so that is the first shank, and that's all done. I put in my second shank, And as you can see here, as I tighten the vise, what happens is that shank opens up and that allows me to take my previous shank, just come right over top and pull it down. All right, so I've got the eight millimeter shank in the vise. So I'm just gonna tighten it down here. Again, you can see it spreading out as I open it, which makes it really convenient just to be able to come in afterwards with your shanks and to be able to have it splayed open like that makes it very easy. Come back with your thread. I'm continuing to use the nano silk, just putting a quick layer down and next we're going to grab out some more of our ice dub uv tan and in this case i'm going to grab just a little bit more than what i had last time so if last time was a, a quarter inch this is just a little bit more than a quarter inch worth of material and i'm going to try to grab the exact same amount and i know that's easier said than done and for this first shank, I'm going to grab the lesser of the two, and I'm going to align those tips. The other thing I'm going to do here is after I put this on, I'm going to do a quick sanity check to see if I've got a little bit more material on. We're doing the exact same thing. So 50% out the front, 50% out the back. So I'm just going to do a couple loose wraps pull everything down onto the bottom and then just wrap forward basically to the to the eye. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a peek at this back shank and do a sanity check to make sure I have enough material or a little bit more 
I don't. So I'm just going to grab, I was going to grab it from that. Um, I'll just grab a little bit more out of the packet here. And I don't know, maybe I got 30, 40 more strands. You can see it's not a crazy amount, but I do want to have more on the larger shank. So I'm going to wrap it in, wrap back, make sure that it's down below. That looks good. Okay, so now I want to make sure that I go all the way back down on the shank here. Reach where that triangle starts. You can see it's still a triangle there. I'm going to pull this material forward using my finger just basically to press everything down to spread it out. Come forward and stop right there. Do a reality check. Make sure I've got the materials in place. They look good. Okay, again, I'm back to my triangle. I've grabbed my Flashaboo, the Mirage, and I'm going to tie it in. A couple of loose wraps, all the way back down to the triangle, and now all the way back forward to the front and just wrap forward. And all it takes really is one solid coating of this Mirage. Looks good. A couple loose wraps on the back. There's two behind it and then two coming forward. Three. I'm just going to leave it and moisten it, put it down for the next shank section. Okay, time to measure. So we're going to do a shank length and a half. So that's about shank length and a half there. Come forward, eyeball it, and then just give it a clip. Okay, same thing, gonna pull it back. Gonna do a couple loose wraps. And I'm going to check to make sure that I've got coverage all around the shank. Looks good. Come two more wraps. Give it another little pull. And what I just noticed is I came back a little too far on the shank itself. So I'm going to abort and I'm going to get a little bit closer to the front. Now I'm going to pull the materials back and do that again. So you want your you want your wraps to be maybe an eye's length back, but certainly no further. So three, four, nice tight. Things are splayed. Looks good. Grab my zap a gap. Hit that first quarter inch. Just wrap that in. Looks good. All right, so let's tie on that hook. We're gonna use a B10S, size number 10. You'll notice I got a tungsten bead on there. It's a 1 8 inch nickel tungsten bead. And I'm gonna use a different thread because I want one that's really gonna help me lash down the mono. And this is a Vivas 100 gel spun. So I'm going to Keep that tungsten bead in the center of the hook. And I'm just going to lay down a layer. I'm coming over top loosely and then just securing it into position. 
All right, that's good. We're gonna hit that with super glue in a minute, so no worries. And I've got my 20 pound mono, which I've cut off a four inch piece or so, and I've connected it to the rear articulations. What I'm gonna do, just put everything on the side. I'm gonna wanna keep the top part of the mono on the top, the bottom on the bottom. And I'm gonna do two loose wraps here, just to make sure that everything is in position. It looks good. And I'm going to start to tighten down. And this is why I really like the Vivas 100 thread. It allows me to cinch things, get them into position, and really put some incredible pressure on. So that looks good. I'm gonna come in front here, bring the mono over and hit it. Couple loose wraps, bring everything back up on top. And I'm going to leave myself at least one hook eye length in front. And this is incredibly important step. If you don't, it's gonna make your head incredibly challenging. So leave that gap, come back again, cinch the crap out of this mono, get it on there really nice and tight. I've gotten to the back part, so I'm just going to hit it real quick, cut it off and I'm gonna walk back the remainder back on that hook just to where it basically aligns a little bit behind that hook point. And you can see the small space that I have there for that rear articulation. All right, I'm gonna grab my zap -a gap This is thin. This is just gonna help ensure that nothing shifts or moves. And as you guys know, this stuff moves through the thread incredibly quickly. So it doesn't take a lot really to, to make it work. All right, I'm gonna go back to my flash and I've got my remnant piece that we've been using. I'm just going to tie it in and go forward. And what I'm gonna do now is just take my time and I'm gonna walk up and remember, this is what creates that lateral line and that flash. And as I get to the bead, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna come right over the top. I'm gonna continue walking up that lateral line all the way over and right down onto the hook shank. And this is where I'm going to tie it off. So just one, two wraps behind and then just come right over top of it. And I'm just gonna pause there for a second and just take a peek at how nice that lateral line is already looking. It's incredibly flashy, right? We've got that nickel bead which flashes and then of course with that flash of boom mirage, it just looks awesome. And the reason why I highlight that is really because the next materials that we're gonna use are gonna be laser dub in white for the belly and laser dub in tan for the back. And what you don't wanna do is pull so much material out that it obscures that lateral line. So as you take it out, and I've just grabbed a pinch of material and you lay it on top of the hook, what you wanna make sure is that you're gonna be able to cover the belly, right, and or the back, but you don't want so much material that it doesn't allow that lateral line to bleed through. So I'm taking a peek. That's actually too much. And let me just um, hold it here for a second. So you'll be able to see, hopefully. And that's just perfect. Now, I've done a little bit of alignment with the tips. I'm just gonna do a little more. And as far as length, what I want is it to go back just beyond the articulation a little bit. And so that looks just about perfect as far as the length itself. So what I'm gonna do is pinch it off and then I'm gonna clip. And what we're gonna do is a reverse tie. So white belly, gonna flip it over. And if you maintain this distance here, this is gonna be easy because all you have to do is now pinch between your finger and your thumb, do a couple loose wraps, make sure that the material is up on top. We already got the measurement, which looks good. And now we're just gonna wrap back 
and cinch everything down into place. And when I pull down, what I wanna do is make sure that I can still see that hook eye. If you go too far, sometimes you'll cover that hook eye. All right, that looks really good. So I'm gonna grab my tan and I'm gonna grab out as close as I can to the exact same amount of material that we have here. And that looks pretty darn good. So as far as a measurement, I already know I got it right with the white and we'll be able to adjust it if we need to. So that looks good. And what I mean adjust it, we'll be able to trim it with the scissors. I'm doing two loose wraps, making sure it's in position, looks good. Gonna wrap forward basically to align with the white. Again, being careful not to obscure the hook eye. Looks good, wrapping back, holding the material and clipping tight. Okay, now all we have to do from here on out is make sure that we get a decent super glue base on the laser dub. So instead of just doing the typical quarter inch that I usually do, I'm gonna do half an inch, really lay it on there so you can actually see those beads because I want it to soak through that thread to hold that laser dub in place. The risk is if you don't do that, what'll happen is your um, laser dub, there is a risk that it'll come out, which would really stink. All right, basically cutting my thread off. I did my wraps, just gonna do a quick check. And now the final step, all we're gonna do is our trimming. So. I'm gonna bring all the materials back. And Velcro is really nice at being able to do that. You can see we got nice 360 degree coverage. Very happy with how that looks. And you can also still see, you can see the bead, you can see the lateral line, which is absolutely perfect. And you guys know, you take a look at a minnow, they're translucent. And that's exactly what we're trying to maintain here. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna start my trimming. So I just took a look at the length and let me show you guys. It's obviously going beyond the length or the start of the articulation here. So I'm gonna trim off about an eighth of an inch on the front here. So just pulling everything front and center. I'm gonna trim that off. And now I've got my anvil taperizing scissors, which I absolutely love. And I'm just going to trim off a little bit to create that taper. Pull everything back again. And that looks good. So what you can see is the tips themselves go just a little bit beyond that front articulation, which is nice. So when it gets wet, it'll settle back but it won't create a, um, so, there won't be so much material there that'll limit the articulation. All right, and the last piece is the actual trimming of the back end of the fly here. And I'm gonna take this um, out of the vise to do that. And what I'm gonna do is go from the back forward. So I'm gonna move my laser dub out of the way Put the fly right into my hand. And remember the taper that we wanna create is basically like that, right? Cause your minnow bodies go from fat to skinny. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Just lining those shanks up, taking my scissors, starting at the tail. And I'm just gonna go right up to create that taper. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom. Again, maintain that triangle, come up and do that trim. And that looks good. All right, let's get in the vise and uh, check it out. What I think you're gonna notice um, immediately is just how cool you know it, uh, it looks between the, the taper, the translucency, the lateral line, everything just comes together and wait until you get this wet and in the water, it looks just like a minnow. Um, so that's the M&M.
very, very excited about this fly and this pattern. Um, and this is, if this is your first time checking me out, thank you. Um, please check out the other videos I have on YouTube. You guys can check me on Instagram. And if you tie something up, please remember to tag me so I can check it out and comment and always feel free to reach out. Tight lines.